Well, the amount of travel we have to do obviously does have an effect on my work-life balance. You get to spend a little less time at home, particularly with my wife and the two boys. But at the same time, it is a small price to pay because nothing beats being at the biggest game in a stadium that's full, maybe in a city that you don't have a huge amount of experience of. It's something that goes with the job and it's not something I would ever change about the job. Whether it's an All-Ireland Final or a Six Nations decider or a Premier League decider, you do often have to pinch yourself to just actually remember the fact that you are there. So huge games, massive crowds, big audiences. It's a great buzz, it's, it's brilliant. I'm David McIntyre, I'm a sports commentator and I get paid to watch sport for a living. I wanted to be a sports commentator from a very young age, since when I was a child, but it just never seemed to be something that was tangible. It was always something that somebody else did. Well, as I considered getting into broadcasting, I was working full-time in the banking industry at the time. I realized that if I wanted to have some sort of a future in radio or television that I needed to become a bit more educated, so I went back to study journalism at Griffith College at night, and I started to do some voluntary work, I guess you could call it, um, with News Talk Radio on a Saturday and a Sunday. And it was from there that the offer of a first job on a full-time basis in broadcasting came from B102, 103 down in the southeast. The move to Waterford what probably was the most difficult part of it because I had just bought a house with my then girlfriend, now wife, and there was obviously a mortgage to think about. It would have involved a major pay cut and I guess ultimately it boiled down to whether you choose to follow your dream or you choose to develop what you already have. And I chose to go down the route of the dream and I have yet to wake up from that. <laughs> when we're traveling to these big games, I do love to sample the atmosphere, particularly the night before. And there's nothing better than just having a wander down the street and, and maybe pop into one of the local pubs. And I do choose not to drink alcohol on the night before a game, just so that I'm fresh and completely ready for the, the following day. So I do find that that's where you know Heineken 00 comes in really handy. You do get to sit there with a beer, knowing that you're going to be 100% ready for the what's coming the day after. Each game I would probably put four to five hours prep into. And I think a lot of commentators would probably say they might use five to 10% of the prep that they put in, but it is like a comfort blanket. It's like going into an exam with far more than you actually need. I don't think anything compares to commentating, to be honest. I do love walking through the gates of a stadium, going through the turnstiles, going towards the press lounge, knowing that, that I have a job of work to do on that afternoon. There's a really exciting feeling about that, knowing that everyone involved, from the stewards to the spectators, to the people at home, right up to the players and the managers, they're all in the same boat in one way. There's very little that beats that on the biggest occasions. It's hugely exciting. I think the key thing about finding myself in the position I am today was making the, the positive choice at, at the right time and in doing so, taking advantage of the opportunities when they presented themselves. There are better broadcasters than I out there that maybe just haven't had the same opportunities that I have had. But on one or two occasions, I have made the positive choice rather than the tentative choice. And I think that's served me very well over the last 10 years or so.